Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're rescuing dogs from Korea. Every year, thousands of dogs are bred to be eaten in South Korea. There are over 17,000 farms all currently operating. The treatment and dispatch of these animals is filthy, inhumane and despicably cruel. After living on wire in cramped tiny cages piled over mountains of excrement, dogs are often hung slowly or electrocuted before being processed and sent to market. I caught up with Humane Society's Wendy Higgins, the only way is Essex Pete Wicks and Good Morning Britain's Pippa Thompson who have just returned from a heart-wrenching rescue mission out in South Korea. We've just come back from uh, our 10th dog meat farm closure in South Korea. It had uh, more than 170 dogs who were being bred for human consumption. It was probably one of the most painful things I've ever done personally. It was quite overwhelming for me when I first got there to see how bad the conditions of of the farm are and, and how bad the conditions are for the dogs. When you first turn up there, you're just assaulted by the sound, by the smells, and then quite quickly you, you just see cage after cage after cage after cage of dogs. And there's dogs that are pushing against the bars of the cage, putting their paws through, desperate for that human contact. There's others that, that are completely the opposite. They're, they're carrying at the back of the cage, they're broken, they're skin and bones. Dogs going out of their minds with boredom and fear. Malnutrition dogs, dogs that were just itching to get out of the cages and actually causing themselves harm trying to get out of the cages. Those dogs that we saw spend 24-7 in those cages. They don't get out. You know, no, no living creature ever, ever deserves that sort of cruelty. They've had a really bad start in life. They need to learn to trust again. Their instinct is to trust you, but they're terrified because their contact with humans has been so negative and often quite so violent. We sit with them and give them time to calm down and we talk to them softly. They come round, um, they sit on your lap, their tails start wagging, they lick your fingers through the bars. They're just desperate to have that human contact. Some of the dogs that we saw on the farm did have collars. Um, some of the dogs would have been previous pets. It's still a complete disparity seeing a South Korean with walking down the street with a cute little dog in a designer coat and then seeing a similar looking dog on a dog meat farm. The farmer on this particular farm um, was typical of all of the farmers that we've worked with. He had his own dog. He'd been farming dog meat for 20 years and he approached HSI because he'd heard through word of mouth that we'd worked with other dog farmers. He had come to the realisation that it's a dying industry it's a trade that is being more and more associated with shame. They know, especially with the younger generations, that actually it's, it's something that shouldn't be happening. The point of our programme is to work with farmers, um, transition them into humane industries, and then to demonstrate to the government there that it's possible to phase out this industry, not by clashing with farmers, but actually making them part of the solution as well. So if I had a message for the South Korean people, it would be just, just spend time looking into a dog's eyes and maybe then you'll realise what beautiful, selfless creatures they are and how actually they are more beautiful than most humans. And then turn around and say that you think it's okay to eat dog meat. All of the dogs were really beautiful, lovely animals, but just in the worst of circumstances. We have to make a decision about which ones come to the UK and which ones go to the US and, and Canada. There's obviously 13 dogs coming back to the UK, are going to get new homes, they're going to start their new journeys in, you know, lovable environments. Many of them are um, typical dog meat dogs that you would find on these farms. Those typical kind of Jindo, yellow dog um, uh, breeds are really surprising to South Koreans when they see them being adopted and being part of somebody's a loving family and that is really important. Us showing people in South Korea those happy ending stories really is changing hearts and minds. So these dogs will come into Heathrow, they will go to our shelter partner All Dogs Matter and All Dogs Matter will assess each one of those dogs and match them up with a suitable family. That will be the, the sort of the first day of their their new life if you like 
Um, and obviously last time that I would have seen the dogs would have been in, in those conditions, in, in a very poor state. I suspect not all of them will, will want to get out of their crates straight away, but those that are ready and willing to take their first step onto UK soil, just putting them on grass for the first time, that is going to be some moment. So having them back in the UK, uh, knowing that actually this is going to be the end of the suffering for them is, um, it's just going to be really, it's going to be really happy. It's probably going to be quite emotional for me. Oh God, I can't wait. Hello, well, it's really exciting. We're outside the Animal Reception Centre at Heathrow Airport. And a couple of months ago, Humane Society International travelled to South Korea to close down its 10th dog meat farm. But this time, they had some very special guests with them. They had Pete Wicks from The Only Way is Essex and Philippa Thompson from Good Morning Britain. And along with Humane Society International, they managed to save over 170 dogs, which are going to America, Canada and England. But today, we're getting to meet the 13 lucky survivors who have just touched down on British soil. So this is Adam. Um, Adam is one of the dogs that I remember specifically from, from Korea because he was so, even over there, he was, he was really happy. He had such a good temperament. Um, and obviously that's not changed coming to the UK, is it, Papi? The tail's not stopped wagging the whole time. Some of the other dogs are in there a little bit nervous, understandably. Yeah. It's the first time they would have had this amount of human contact. And obviously they've had quite a long journey from Korea. So it might take them a little bit more time and a little bit more patience. but. You know, this is this is just the start. And this is Abby. Abby's so lovely. Gorgeous Abby. <laughs> it's just so amazing to see her because last time I saw her, she was in a really bad way. She had worms and mange and she lost loads of weight. I was really worried about her, but it's great. Her fur's growing back. Um, she's looking bright as a button. She's yeah. obviously really scared. Yeah. Um, but, you know, little does she know, her life is about to get so much better. All the dogs are wonderful, but there's always one that just has a bit of a special place in your heart. And this is Jack. Jack is gorgeous, isn't he? Oh, he's absolutely adorable, yeah. I mean, to think that he's come from this awful, awful place and he's such a loving, trusting, bouncy, fun-filled dog. It's really hard, isn't it, to, to, um, to think about how some people view dog meat dogs as being different to pets. There's absolutely no difference between these dogs and anyone's pets, is there? No, absolutely not. And I think that's 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 a nice toy you've got there, Annika. Um, that's that's a realization that a lot of Koreans are now making. Layla's here, and um, was she one of the ones that you saw in yes. Korea and thought was really rather special? I mean, they, I know they're all really special, yeah, but was she one of your more? They're all super special. Um, Layla, I got her out of her cage for the first time, so that was quite a moment for me to to take her on those first steps to freedom. To spend that time with her on the farm and then to see her in the UK and put her on grass for the first time has been amazing. Once the dogs had arrived, it was off to charity All Dogs Matter in North London, who have kindly collaborated with Humane Society International in order to rehome the 13 dogs out to some very lucky adopters in the UK. Vet on the Hills Scott Miller was on hand to greet the lucky arrivals and to give them a check over. So Scott, what have you what do you think of the dogs that have come here today? They're looking great. Um, I'm really quite surprised, although a lot of them look quite sort of shocked and a little bit like sort of ghosts behind the eyes. They never used to being treated affectionately or with kindness. So some of them are sort of shadows. But apart from that, physically, they're actually quite healthy. A lot of them have some facial injuries, which is uh, 
as a result of them being in cramped environments, so they fight for everything, food and space. Uh, and also got some injuries to their feet because they're actually never on solid ground, they're always on a caged surface, so they have cut pads. The ones that have got um, sores to their feet, how do, how, what's the best way to allow that to heal? Well, I think in the end it's just time and some of them, if they're infected, they'll need some antibiotics. Some might need just a little bit of cream to moisturise the pads. But generally, I think it's just being in an environment where they're allowed to stand on a solid floor, which isn't too much to ask. So little Abby is still on a course of treatment for mange. So she's on an antiparasitic treatment alongside some antibiotics and that's doing a great job in her skin. Although it looks a little bit like a pack patchwork quilt at the moment, um, she will come right. Some of the more confident dogs went for a small walk outside and were greeted by the All Dogs Matter staff. I fell in love with a really cute Shiba Inu mix called George, who was a real pudding. One of the lucky 13 to have made it here today at All Dogs Matter. Now George was actually quite nervous the other end, but now he's actually feeling a little bit better and he's come out to say hello. And if things couldn't have got any better for one pup, Adam, then this happened. So uh, he's going to come home with me tonight. Um, I'm going to foster him for the night, see how he gets on back at mine. Uh, and then we're both going to be on telly tomorrow um, to talk about career and your new potential life. And are you going to give him a bath? I am going to give him a bath, yeah. <laughs> I think you need a bath, don't you, mate? Yeah. So we're going to have a little bath something nice to eat and then we'll probably curl up on the sofa. Adam made a special appearance on Good Morning Britain the next day in the hope that all the dogs will find their forever home. And everyone was also sent this surprising last minute special message from no other than Simon Cowell. Happy New Year everyone. Uh, I've just found out how many dogs you saved through the campaign you launched. I want to say a big thank you to you guys, a massive important to all the viewers who supported our campaign or your campaign. Uh, Happy New Year, and my little buddy wants to say something. Happy New Year. And? And thank you for saving those doggies. Oh well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch. It was a true delight to film. And remember, if you're thinking of getting a dog in the future, really think about adopting rather than buying from a breeder because there are just thousands and thousands of dogs all over the world just like George here that really need your help whether they're from the dog meat trade, strays abroad or simply addressing the stray and abandoned situation in the UK there are dog shelters everywhere that you can go to and as you can see George he looks like a pure breed he's absolutely gorgeous if you enjoyed this film then please remember to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and remember to tune in every week when i will be bringing you some wonderful stories on animal rescue conservation wolves and dogs bye for now if you would like to adopt a dog from the korean dog meat trade through humane society international then you can do this if you live in the uk the usa and canada as this is where the 170 dogs rescued are heading. Please contact All Dogs Matter Direct for all UK inquiries and the Humane Society International USA and Canadian offices for all other inquiries.